I'm here with my friend Sherry today. Um, Sherry is a wife of four kids. Clayton. Uh, uh, Clayton. Yes. Yeah. Wife, of, wife Clayton, of Clayton. Wife of Clayton. <laughs> mother of four. Three grown children. And then a five-year-old daughter that is <laughs> that is speaking up right now. Yes. Um, and is adopted. And we're going to talk mostly about her story. Okay. First of all, um, tell me about the process of of gaining Stevie in your family. What was that like? Um, oh, it was a whirlwind, honestly, not expected. We were a year out from being empty nesters, and so um, then we get this phone call saying that we have a niece in um, the foster system, and they were looking for family members to place her with. Um, so she was um, directly placed into foster care from birth, okay. so she never actually lived with her biological parents. Um, and, um, so it, it was kind of crazy. We we met with the social worker and we kind of talked about it and we brought our kids together and we kind of talked about it and then we met Stevie for the first time and it was really a challenging conversation because they're fabulous people and here we were thinking we're older maybe she'd be better with them instead of us and so we really struggled at first to try to determine what the best placement for her would be. And party. Um, and it was really interesting because the the social workers um, really helped guide us through that. They were fabulous and that they explained so, a lot of the statistical um, information that goes behind keeping kids within family versus oh, out yeah. of families. And um, and then and we conversed with the foster family too and even though they wanted to adopt Stevie um, they also felt if she were their niece, they want to keep her in the family too. Sure. Okay. So then, so it was kind of a unified decision. We actually came together as a family group. So her biological grandparents on both sides, as well as us, um, I think one or two of our kids were there. We met a couple of times with bio mom was there. Um, bio dad was not because he was incarcerated at the time. And um, and we talked about it. What was the best place for her? And um, and we decided that we were the best place, huh, Munster? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah. So, um, did she once you brought her into your home? Mm -hmm. Did she immediately feel like yours, or was that oh, a man. process of? No, nah, she felt like ours. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just I, I never knew what it would feel like. I mean, we've always kind of unofficially taken in kids here and there over the years um but she just she's just been ours and our kids took her on and their siblings they argue with her just the same as they argue with each other um and sometimes i have to remind them that you're in the 20s and she's the four-year-old so <laughs> but um but they we, she's just she is part of our family she has been from day one So, um, how about you as a as a mother right now of adult children? Their needs are very different yeah. from hers. Hers are more demanding and mm -hmm. require a lot more of your time. So, how do you make sure that your adult children are feeling loved and supported, have the mom that they need right now, right. while still focusing all your effort? On That's been a really young child. big challenge, and and we've had moments of um, of my adult children not feeling neglected, but kind of jealous of Stevie. Hey, and, um, yes. you know, it, we've had to sit down and talk with them and say, you know, first of all, we're in a different place financially than when you kids, you know, having three kids in three years. We were young. I was a stay-at-home mom. So financially, we weren't as strong as we are now. Right. Yeah. Um, and and she, our, after raising three kids, we've had the time to reflect on the things we would have done different. Sure. And so we're able to act on that. And we are more lax in some areas because we know those aren't areas to waste our energy on. Yeah. And so um, it may seem to them that she gets away with more, but it's really just our experience in adjusting how we've parented. Um, it's a really conscientious decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, they, you know, they all call in their own certain times and have their own certain needs. and. Um, and we do make sure we take time out for them. 
and, and vice versa, part of our thing when we agreed to take Stevie on was that we're in this together as a unit and that being that we're older, heaven help us, um, <laughs> that at some point we may need their help Dad. taking care of and raising Stevie. And so, um, so those are conversations that we've had with them and they're all more than willing. They all bring such a unique gift to Stevie. And mm. it's kind of, Morgan is the second mom, obviously. Um, and um, she, it was funny because at one point it was her senior year in high school and she's like, I love watching you mother. I mean, how many teenagers get to see that? Oh, That's yeah. pretty awesome. And then Evan has, hey guys, um, so Stevie can have these wonderful meltdowns that are from her, her sensory processing disorder and they can go on for 45 minutes and they're pretty they're pretty intense um but he has a way with her he can de-escalate her faster than anyone else wow. and he just has this soft nature with her and then brendan is like the playmate the fun you know big brother who will go out and has no problem going out and pushing her on her bicycle out in the patio and playing in the sprinkler and just being a kid wow. and so it's kind of fun to see how each one brings a different thing to their relationship with her. It makes so. her life so much more whole. It That's does. really incredible. And it gives us a little break. <laughs> because we're tired all the time. <laughs> yeah. So can you give me an example of, uh, you said that there's some things you've decided to leave out that you could do differently that you didn't need to worry about? Well, first of all, about? my house rarely is spotless. <laughs> okay. I've, I have learned over the years that when my three kids were, and I was an at-home mom, my house was very clean, and that was my job. I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, so I guess the greatest thing that I've had to accept is I'd rather spend my time with her instead of worrying about scrubbing the house every weekend. And so um, we, I let things go a little bit more. And so I, I know how fast time goes after raising three kids. So once they get into school, it's boom. They're graduated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm already see, feeling it now with her. It's just, you know, we're looking at kindergarten in a year, and it just goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. So um, focusing my time mm -hmm. more on her and her needs. You know, some of the other things are, uh, yeah, it's hard to pick because they just happen so naturally yeah. anymore. Right. You know, it's like um, just some battles I don't want to fight with, you know. She's kind of a kiddo where she gets hangry very easily. Okay. And yet she'll get up in the morning and she refuses to eat, but she's going into meltdown because she needs to eat. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, if it means I give her a piece of candy to get her over that home so that I can get her to eat breakfast, I'll do that. I never would have done that with my first three. Yeah. You know, so it's little things like that that you kind of adjust. Um, now you've mentioned uh, Stevie has some special needs mm -hmm. that um, bear a little more attention yep. than some of your other kids have needed. Yep. Um, but you also have a background in special education. Yep. So tell me kind of how that prepared you to work with Stevie and how it didn't. You know, <laughs> what surprised you? You know, that. I do reflect a lot on some of the things that I learned um, working in special education. There's, there's a lot of tools that um, I've used. Um, but it's totally different as a parent because what teachers see in the classroom are definitely Mommy. not what parents see at home. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, she, cream. yeah, she <laughs> is the kiddo who in in I'm not public, I'm big. You're my big kid, who um, <laughs> when she's in public or at school, she keeps it together. Okay. Um, and but as soon as she gets in the car and we start heading home, then the stress and anxiety of the day all comes crashing down. And so we see the meltdowns and the misbehaviors and all of that come out in the evenings sure. um, and weekends. So we are, and that's very common, we're her safe zone. Right. Um, we, because of my awareness, it led us to early intervention, which I think has helped her tremendously. Okay. Um, starting, um, she was about two and a half, 
uh, we really were like, these are not normal tantrums. There's something going on. And knowing her, um, she was a drug-affected baby. So she was positive for drugs at birth. And um, so knowing that we had the potential of problems coming down the road, and we sure. still don't know the extent of what we may have, um, we were kind of more aware. And so we sought out help. She was still um, considered a foster kid at that time. So we went through the right channels. Um, we started seeing an OT. Um, and um, so she's, she is delayed in her fine motor. Um, we have diagnosed her as sensory processing disorder. So we started seeing um, an occupational therapist, um, a little bit of speech therapy. At that point, it wasn't as much of a concern. Um, when she was right at three o'clock, three o'clock, three years old, we did some play therapy. Um, so we went to Spokane once a week and did worked on emotion regulation, um, and that was tremendously helpful mm -hmm. um, because the the psychologist there not only was helping her, but they were teaching me, so I can continue to mimic that here at home. And, um, she's on and off with. Uh, speech therapy and occupational therapy. So, okay. so. so special education brought the awareness, but I've learned so much about the sensory processing and how it impacts children's behaviors that now I've gone back to some of my old teacher friends. I'm like, oh, you guys have to study it because most of your behavior kids can benefit from some of these tools. Oh, sure. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, final question is you've... Um, raised kids that are closer to my age, you now have a child in a different generation. Mm -hmm. What's different about raising oh kids gosh. in different generations? Well, first of all, we're finding that personally, we don't fit. All of our friends are empty nesters and they're doing things that we can't really participate in because sure. we have a small person unless we get a babysitter. Um, and then you go on the other end of it and you find parents that have children her age and they're the same age as our kids right. so or similar or we're students of mine from years ago and oh, so it's right. like yeah. wow so where do you fit I mean that social aspect of it is it it's, it was a big eye-opener we never realized that we'd be just this anomaly out here as yeah, parents absolutely. Um, but um, raising two gener it's I do compare quite a bit it's really hard because, well, we used to do it this way. Well, it's a totally different world. I mean, you know, it's 20 years difference from the oldest to the youngest here. Right, right. And a lot of things have changed in time. Um, but parenting is parenting. You support your kids. You teach them right from wrong, and you hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <you, laughs> <Amen. laughs> it's about all you can do, really. It's like, did they listen, please? <laughs> Most of the time they listen, even that. though it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> In one minute. Okay. Mm. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sherry, what's your favorite sound? The ocean. What's your least favorite sound? Just people chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sensory issue. All right, all right. What's your favorite word? Uh, my favorite word, I actually have thought of this, peace. Peace. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, in great. all areas of my world. Mommy, I see you. Sherry, what do you know? What do I know? What don't I know? <laughs> what, do I know? <laughs> um, what do I know? Um, I know how to raise kids across all age groups at this point. Cool. So, um, what do you want to learn? I'm always learning. Right now, my focus is learning what I need to in order to provide her with the most successful life she can choose to have. What scares you? Oh my gosh, scares me. I have two things. One of them's personal. So paralysis scares me. And that comes from, I have had both hips replaced. I've had numerous surgeries. And so paralysis okay. has always been a lifelong fear. The second one is, is losing my kids. That scares me to death. So. Yeah. Oh gosh, I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah, don't. <laughs> um, and Sherry, what are you good at? What am I good at? That's the hardest question of them all. I hear that a lot. I yeah. bet you do. <laughs> uh, what am I good at? Um, you know, I think I'm just good at making people feel at ease. 
whether it's children. Um, you know, I was always the mom who, in the bleachers, all the kids flocked to me. And so I was like the bleacher mom. And um, I just, people feel comfortable around me. And so I think that's what I'm good at. That's a great gift. But I can tell you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really gotcha. appreciate it. And, and thank see, you see here it is 10 o'clock and my child's having whipping cream. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? You do what you can to get through the day.